I'd like to take just a second and give you a very brief and somewhat arbitrary biography so that we can maybe skip some of the formalities and have a sense of some of the background that Wayne brings to his art making and to also give you an idea of his very wide-ranging and really remarkable journey as an artist. Mr. Tebow was born in Mesa, Arizona. He moved to Long Beach before he was a year old and then did a stint both in LA and on a family farm in southern Utah at the outset of the Depression. He returned to Long Beach and his early interests as a youth included staging and theater, music, his enchantment with his Uncle Jess's cartooning. His father was an inventor and engineer and his mother was the granddaughter of original Mormon pioneers in the West. His youthful jobs included an array of things, and this is not in order, illustrating movie posters as a cartoonist, dishwashing, a ship fitter, and a summer spent as an apprentice in Walt Disney's studios, where he also found a uh, burgeoning interior um, impetus to be a labor organizer to side with the <laughs> unions. He served in the Air Force uh, during the war as an artist and a cartoonist, and he spent the last few months working on the first Air Force motion picture unit, which was led by no other than Ronald Reagan. He studied commercial art and worked as an illustrator, cartoonist, and layout artist. He turned to art and art history when he was in his late 30s and early 40s, and he went to graduate school, went to college in San Jose State, and then in uh, Northern California and Sacramento in graduate school. He taught at UC Davis for over 30 years and continues to keep his hand in teaching. The rest of his career is really history. After his first exhibition in New York at Allen Stone Gallery, the Museum of Modern Art bought a major work, and he went on to become one of the legends in American painting and American art. He has done so many things in his career. He's illustrated Alice Waters' <coughs> Chez Panisse Desserts, um, which I think is delectable whether you cook or not, and MFK Fisher's books. He did an album cover for Dave Brubeck. How many artists have this kind of Renaissance career? So we're thrilled to have Mr. Tebow with us tonight. Would you like to say anything as a preface about your work or your interests, how it feels to look back at such um, a, a long and very um, fruitful career in this exhibition? I think not. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much for your discussion. and. Uh, it shows something which I had not thought of before, of how many different jobs I had in desperation, <laughs> and how many wonderful people took time out to show me how to do things, including sign painters and scene painters, wonderful women fashion illustrators, who uh, really amounted to what training and education in craft and expectancy about doing things, trying to do things well, and I owe them a great debt. They were generous and uh, helpfully critical, and the kind of teaching which I think uh, we need and which for a long time I've been interested in, and working with students has been a great privilege to do that. With so many skills in your background, what was it about painting that drew you into its orbit? And that in, what was it that made you want to focus on exploring painting? Well, painting, I think, is one of the great human miracles in that it attempts, in my view, to make alternate little worlds which are, in some ways, may parallel the world, which may be close to the world, but finally, which are little worlds in themselves. And uh, this gives us, when we think about it, like literature, like other forms of art, a kind of expanded world that we can inhabit as well. If we go to museums, uh, there's an opportunity to experience other cultures, the way other people think about the world, 
a way in which they touch us in some way in which the intimacy of which means a great deal, not something which is abstract or second hand, but a real object which uh, doesn't move, doesn't say anything, it's still, it's flat, but in that area, there's this, for me, terrific magic. It's, it's a kind of um, unnatural act, because when you think about a surface which is flat and trying to make it feel as though it's not flat, you're taken up with lying. Um, it's also not natural to make space on a flat surface. But that kind of space is a unique one. It gives you a simultaneous experience of flat and round, of being there and not being there, of having light when there is no light. All of these sort of magical aspects of what painting is about. I, I don't know why everybody doesn't become a painter. <laughs> Just think of I mean, uh, you got this stick with some hairs on the end of it. <laughs> and some stuff, some earth or <clears throat> something else that's been grown. <coughs> See, my students will tell me, well, we knew you were going to talk too much. <laughs> but you get this stuff out of the earth in various colors and you mix it with glue or gasoline or mayonnaise or <laughs> something. And then you <laughs> spread it on this surface. You know. I mean, that's a, isn't that a silly thing to do? <laughs> I mean, that challenge of, uh, of taking those strange different things, and then being required to make this thing make sense. I find it one of the most difficult things to do. And that's why we go to the museums to try and steal and plunder and use all those guys and women who did it so beautifully. So that's the short answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the vicarious thrill for those of us that can't paint of, of looking at your work. You've talked about how important it is to see slowly, to paint yes. slowly, to, to live more slowly. Can you talk a little bit about how you bring that into your painting? I mean, many of these paintings have, you've touched them over the course of sometimes two decades in working on them. How does painting cure in your studio or in your mind or in, in the process of making them? Well, I think, I don't know why, but I think uh, particularly today, somehow that uh, we've rushed past so many things so quickly. And painting can't, in my opinion, be like that. It's, you got to stop, you have to stare, you have to study and uh, make some sort of critical evaluation. Why, why is that? Why, when I look at a Bonard painting, which has no interior light, 